Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's quick Sunday video, I want to take a look at Walter's Isaacson's latest video on CRISPR. Of course, Walter Isaacson wrote a CRISPR book, which I highly, highly recommend you guys to read it. Of course, the code breaker, uh, code breaker <laughs> rather. And uh, it's actually a book about CRISPR, specifically about Dr. De Doudna. Uh, Walter actually is really known in this space um, when it comes to books, when it comes to biographies, when it comes to storytelling. In fact, um, some of you may have read his previous books, which were books such as uh, the one on Da Vinci, the one on Steve Jobs, the one on Einstein, there was one on Benjamin Franklin. And actually he's, if I'm correct, he's actually writing as we speak a book on Elon Musk, which is gonna be really big. I really think this author is gonna blow up in the next two, three years within the mainstream when it comes to technology because he has now covering the most popular and arguably important man in the planet when it comes to technology, which is Elon Musk, right? So. I think he's gonna blow up, but because he's gonna blow up, of course, this book is gonna come resurface it. I mean, this book was published in 2020 during the pandemic. In my opinion, I think this book didn't live up to its hype. I think because maybe because it was 2020 and all these authors were coming out with their own versions of books on other things, not just by the pandemic, it just gave an excuse for people to write books when they're staying home. Uh, so I think there was a sort of overflux of authors publishing books around that period and I think his book sort of got you know a little bit less less attention again he's a really known author right in the autobiography space I read his book on Da Vinci it was an amazing book the code breaker one was also amazing so I highly recommend you guys to to read it if you have not but let's go ahead and play his video here that he just published just a couple of days ago five days ago about a video on Crow Breaker, my book on CRISPR and Jennifer Downer. Let's play it, let's see what we get out of it. Hi, I'm Walter Isaacson, author of The Code Breaker, the story of Jennifer Doudna, gene editing, and the future of the human race. It's a wonderful tale about a brilliant scientist and a really great person named Jennifer Doudna, but it's also the story about discovery, how discovery happened and how people turn discovery into inventions. When she was in sixth grade, Jennifer came home one day and found on her bed a copy of a book called The Double Helix. She put it aside thinking it was a detective story. Uh, and when she picked it up on a rainy Saturday afternoon a few weeks later, she realized, well, in a certain way, she was right. It was a tale about people trying to figure out the ultimate mysteries of life. It was filled with colorful characters and wonderful partnerships and rivalries, all in pursuit of the wonders of nature. It made Jennifer decide that she wanted to become a scientist. And even though her high school guidance counselor told her, women don't become scientists, she decided she would, and she did. And she ended up being one of the discoverers of what James Watson, the author of that book, The Double Helix, later told her was the most important scientific discovery since his own co-discovery of the structure of DNA. She and her colleagues figured out something called CRISPR, which is a system bacteria have used for more than a billion years in their fight against viruses. What they do is when a virus attacks them, they can remember a little of the genetic code of that virus. So if the virus comes back, boom, they can chop it up and kill the virus. In other words, it's a system for immunity against viruses that's adaptive. It's just what we humans need in this era in which we've been plagued by wave after wave of virus pandemics. This technology, this tool, this gene editing tool has already been used to help fight the coronavirus. It's been used to cure genetic diseases such as sickle cell anemia. It's been used to fight cancer. And it's even been used now to design babies so that they can have particular genetic traits. In 2018, a Chinese scientist 
uh, in a somewhat of a rogue experiment, created the first designer babies. Two twins, two CRISPR babies that had their genes edited so they didn't have the receptor that would make them susceptible to the virus that causes AIDS. It was kind of premature. Scientists weren't ready for this to be used this way. And so arms flailed, there was shock and awe, committees convened. Suddenly, after a billion years of evolution of life on this planet, one species, in the ours, had the talent, but also the temerity to edit its own genes, to hack its own evolution. It raised a whole lot of moral questions. If we could use this technology to edit our children and all of our descendants to be immune to viruses, would we do so? Well, after this coronavirus pandemic, I think a lot of us would say, well, maybe so. And what about using it to fight deadly inherited diseases like sickle cell or Huntington's or cystic fibrosis? Yeah, that sounds pretty good as well. And what about using it to cure deafness or blindness? or keeping kids from being too short, or making sure they weren't depressed. Hmm, how would we think about that? And what about doing things like giving our kids better athletic ability, or choosing their hair color, or making them blue-eyed or taller, or adding to their IQ points if we could afford it? Wait, wait, wait. Before we fall all the way down this slippery slope, let's pause and think of the consequences. What will that do to the diversity of our species, of all the colorful diversity that makes life so rich and wonderful? And if these offerings at the genetic supermarket aren't free, and they won't be, what's that going to do to inequality? Is it going to encode the inequality we already have and encode it forever into our species? After helping invent this technology, Jennifer Dowda has taken the lead in wrestling with the moral question and in dealing with the public policy debate. It's a wonderful story that we all have to figure out because we, you and me, all of us, are going to have to figure out what are we going to do with this powerful new technology. And it's also a wonderful story because it's about the mysteries of life. There's something beautiful, something joyful in being able to understand how something works, especially when that something is ourselves. That's what gave joy to Jennifer Dowden. That's what can give us all joy, and that's what this book is all about. All right, I mean, obviously, as you guys can see, it's pretty much a promotion of his own book, which is fine. I mean, he's the author, right? And he's publishing his own Twitter account, so why not? I would have done the same. Actually, I do the same in my videos, right? So... Uh, but besides that, I really like it. Just a quick uh, correction on one of his points. I think he said something like, um, you know, CRISPR has already cured sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. I want to restate that you can't use that terminology. You cannot say that it has cured sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia because there is no FDA approved uh, CRISPR therapy, specifically or hexacell. Until it's not FDA approved, you can't really say it's cured. Yes, you can see potentially cured. Yes, you can see that it will be in the foreseeable future curing those types of diseases, but you cannot say it has cured it. Uh, that is, of course, from one of our, one of Vertex and CRISPR uh, therapeutics patient, Jimmy, who we interviewed, sort of explained that to me. Um, but, you know, besides that, I really like this. I think, like I said, after that Elon Musk book that Walter is writing, I really think this book, specifically CRISPR, will take off as well. I mean, this is just the law of authors. It's always like that. When an author publishes an amazing book on something that's very popular, uh, readers tend to want to read their previous books, right? And in this case, we're going to have a whole wave of new um, enthusiasts of CRISPR because you just cannot help yourself to learn more about this technology, right? And I think that book does an amazing job sort of dumbing it down, getting your feet dirty, feet wet rather, and... So hands dirty and feet wet and sort of dipping in in the world of CRISPR. I, I really think there's a lot of exciting things coming this year. And I think um, I think everything that Walter said here about it potentially, you know, 
editing traits to make you more athletic, taller, stronger? What does that do with, you know, the ethic side of things, morals? I think that's all going to juggle, but that's more for 10, 15, 20 years play, in my opinion. For now, I think the next five to 10 years is all about potentially curing certain diseases, cancerous cells, cancerous cancers, so some myelu- myelumia, leukemia, and so on. Leukemia, right? right? So um, we'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what happens. As always, guys, subscribe if you're not. Like this video if you value. And let me know in the comments, guys, what do you guys think about this video? What do you, what do you guys think about Walter? book if you read it and what do you guys think about some of the statements here let me know in the comments below hopefully you are having a beautiful sunday it's sunny here so i'm gonna go out get some sun i'll see you guys next weekend in the next video thank you